John here guys and today we're talking about the GEP RC Dolphin. You must think like the Dolphin, you must be getting inside the Dolphin's head and communicating. I'm saying the snowflake, okay, 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 okay. and he is saying, okay, 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 and he is up on the tail. <laughs> That's right, the latest lightweight four inch racing or freestyle build that is sweeping the scene. And this is significant because this is the first premium level, extremely fast, powerful, nimble four inch quad that can be combined with a 4S battery to equal less than 250 grams. And that is a significant number in today's proposed legislation and current legislation so who knows if that'll be the factor going forward but for now this is a significant um weight milestone for around the globe and never before has quite a package been put together that is this powerful this lightweight this maneuverable and this race ready but let's go through the features on whether or not this is ready for prime time or does it need a little bit more tweaking uh, first things first this thing flies exceptionally well and um, I'm going to have to make a lot of comparisons to my Racer X Twig Mutant 4 inch. Um, and some of those comparisons will be whether you should buy it or build it. Um, now, a couple of notable things about this off the bat are that this does not use the T style mount prop. And um, you gain a little bit of extra weight there. But. Um, T-style mount prop does have this very impressive um, prop, this bi-blade prop right here, but tri-blade is going to give you that additional power. And I feel like GEPRC has mated this motor selection perfectly. While I'm using 1408, 3600 kV for 4S here, GEPRC has decided to go with a little bit wider um, 1507 motor, and they're using a lower kV of 3200 kV um, so what they're trying to bank on is some efficiency with a very powerful motor being that they're recommending a three blade prop so the extra power from the prop will be balanced out by that lower kV give you a very similar amount of performance um, without sacrificing your battery too much um, let's go through the components real quick. This has GEP RC's new 20, or it's not 20 by 20, it is a toothpick style board. Uh, I believe it is 20 amp on board, so it should be able to handle the 4S three blade, four inch prop power of this thing, no problem. Uh, it also comes with Cadex EOS 2 camera. Now I'm not particularly excited by that camera choice. It has one of these diamond style VTXs on board that goes up to 200 milliwatt. That's totally fine. It has a dipole antenna. And uh, this one comes shipped with the XM Plus FR Sky receiver installed. Where they went over the motors and of course the props. These are in my opinion the best four inch props on the market. Now there's not a lot of choice in the matter there, but these are the HQ um, four by 4.3 by three. Uh, this is a very nice sort of a lower pitch that gives you a lot of grab, a lot of control and a lot of power. Um, it has a TPU pod at the back. This is printed with a, with a pretty nice high infill. So it's actually has a little bit of flex to it, but it's quite sturdy and substantial. And let's talk about the frame. This is probably what I'm most excited about here, um, guys. And it is a sandwich design plate with a small two mil plate on the bottom, a small two mil plate on the top and it has four millimeter arms in the middle. That are arms that up until a few years ago, we were using on our five inch frames, right? We've now kind of moved over to um, five mil on most of our five inches, but four mil on something this small and this light is absolutely gonna give you a lot of durability. I also really like the motor protection that they have given you out at the end of the arm and to save weight and add some simplicity, they are only using three of the motor screws, which that's what I do in a lot of my builds anyway, so I think that's perfectly fine. Um, comes with quite a lot of extras in the box. Let's go through those very quickly. It comes with two sets of those HQ props. 
um, which I love that. I mean, that's worth, you know, seven, eight bucks right there. It comes with two of these very premium straps. Um, these straps, it's not Kevlar, but it's sort of that pleathery material. So it's going to be a lot more sturdy than your standard regular strap. And I love that the frame, because it uses that sandwich design, has a built-in spot for that strap to go in. It's not just simply sliding under this tiny little stack. So I really appreciate that fact. That is sort of a rarity, especially at this size. Um, also comes with some sort of like Uma Grip soft mount stuff for your battery. I'm going to put that on very soon. Comes with a little wrench for you to be able to take on and off props. I mean, that's a welcome addition. It comes with some forever antenna tubes um, that are very long. You could probably get two sets out of this by cutting them in half. You don't need that much length. Um, I will note that in the pictures, they have the antenna tubes coming out up like that. But when I put them in, they were just a little bit too close to the prop line. So I didn't put those in. I just folded my antenna tubes inside the pod. I'm not going to be doing long range on this, so this is totally fine. Uh, in addition to that, it comes with your instructions, some GEPRC stickers, and a little support card. So just your standard stuff. Oh, and I do know it does come with a tiny little Allen wrench. So this is a 1.5 hex key, I believe. So if you don't already have a set of drivers, you can still take apart, replace arms, and work on everything in this quad. So how does it compare to the build that I did? A um, couple of quick notes. This motor combination will, if you punch it, it will drain the battery so fast. It's pulling a lot of amps because of this three bladed prop, even with the slightly lower KV. Um, but I did notice that they bounce back. So it has a very sharp spike. So I'm thinking you're probably going to want to run some sort of a throttle cut on here because there's no usable throttle um, above maybe 80 or 85% throttle. Um, another note that I noticed is that this thing really almost has, you know, like a lot of Kabaz videos, he talks about throttle feeling like an on off switch. I really felt that in this one. Um, it's like nothing, nothing, nothing. And you get to a certain point and then just boom, super fast punches. Now you can't sustain that high throttle speed. Um, so it's going to fly a little bit differently than this bi-blade version that's a little bit lighter. I think you end up gaining about 7 grams, but that's totally acceptable. It's still going to keep you under 250 grams, even with an 850 milliamp 4S pack on board. Um, so let's go to some of the cons. Well, let's finish about, let's finish talking. So how does it fly? It flies really, really great. I think I'm going to need to put a throttle cut or a throttle curve on there to get a little bit more manageable speed. All of that usable power seems to be inside of that 30 to 80% throttle range. So you don't have a lot of resolution with the power band of this thing, but a throttle cut will solve that. No problem. Um, it flies so great, so nimble, so powerful. It allows you to do any type of move. This thing has a better power to weight ratio than most of my freestyle builds. Um, straight line speed, I feel like very similar. Um, stay tuned to, uh, for this because I'm gonna be doing a couple more videos on this thing. This is the initial impressions and some flight video doing some light freestyle, but I'm gonna be taking both of these on tracks to see how they perform. Now, speaking of track flying, Let's get a couple things out of the way. Um, the Cadex EOS 2 camera is really something that was more acceptable like in 2018, early 2019. Now that the Runcam Nano 2 is out, nobody really uses this camera anymore. So that's kind of a negative. Now replacing that camera is very cheap, only about 15, 16 bucks to change it over to the Nano 2, or you can change it over to like the Nano Racer or the Nano Predator, any of those, and you'll be quite good. Even though this TPU pod does seem fairly sturdy, there's not a ton of camera protection. As you can see, the camera lens um, is really right out in front. So it's going to take a hit. Um, also, as far as protecting the stack, I don't love that you are actually using that stack as some of the built-in structure of the frame. Um, if you noted on this twig, the pod is actually on separate hardware from the stack that is internal to this. So 
that means that in a hit, you're going to have all of the impact distributed to the force of this pod and its separate hardware. Whereas in a hit, this um, is going to transfer all of that impact directly to the stack. So let's see if the lighter weight can offset some of that inertia and be able to allow you to stay safe. But other than that, like that's a very specific type of need that I'm talking about there. I'm talking about flying this in an actual race alongside five inch people. Um, I'm talking about, can this be a replacement for five inch quads? If we do have to all come below 250 grams, I think flight wise, performance wise, absolutely. There's going to need a little bit of tuning for that throttle curve, like I mentioned, but performance wise, absolutely. But, um, how is it going to behave in a crash when you start breaking things? I think the frame is one of the best four inch options I've ever seen. It's very similar to like any of those, uh, double sandwich plate designs, easily replaceable arms in there. Uh, that's going to be no problem at all. What I'm a little bit more concerned about is your stack and this pod, but that should be fairly easily replaceable. But because of the way the frame is designed, there is not an option to be able to have a pod that covers your stack like the other frame. So that's my only um, negative. If you're not going to be racing, if you just want a fun park flyer, if you want to you know, do some light racing, not worry about it. If you're not the kind of racing pilot that hits gates at full speed, like I do sometimes, then there's no worries at all. And because these are so cheap, I've seen them this week in the FPV sales alerts group as low as $136, $136. Can you build this for $136? I don't think so. Um, so it is so unbelievably cheap. Um, in fact, if I need spare props, I might just as well just go buy another one of these because that's how cheap they are. Well, not really, but um, what do you think guys in the comments? Stay tuned. There's going to be a lot more coverage of this model. I'm very excited to see a lot of the folks putting out um, four inches. I'm probably still going to have that. Now everyone's thinking, what about the Baby Hawk R4 inch? What about the Baby Hawk R4 inch? That one, you still have about an extra 20 grams um, there. And that 20 grams with an 850 milliamp pack puts you over that 250 gram weight. So I'd like to see Emacs put out a version of that with the 1408 motors, perhaps bring that weight down, use the T-style mount prop, but I think they're gonna be very hard pressed to match this weight with that combination. Thanks guys. The Dolphin. It is estimated that this incredible animal uses up to 20% of its cerebral capacity.